Hello there fellow sea glass lovers, I'm Jackie. So this Saturday, June 20th, 2020, there's going to be a virtual beachcombing festival that's sponsored by Beachcombing Magazine. Just go to www.beachcombing.fun and you'll see all sorts of interesting stuff. There's going to be talks and speakers and all sorts of booths. I'm involved in it. I have a booth there. And there's going to be lots of people showing their sea glass and showing you projects. It'll be really worthwhile, so check it out. So whenever I'm involved in a sea glass festival, I always like to do something new. So I'm continuing on with my sailboat sea glass mosaics, but I'm doing something a bit different. I'm going to show you today how to make this four inch by six inch postcard that's quilted that has a sea glass sailboat on it. Now, before you click off this video, you might say to yourself, oh, I'm not gonna watch this one. I, do, I can't quilt, I can't make that. I want you to consider three things. The first thing is that if you own a sewing machine, chances are pretty good that over the last couple of months you've dug out your sewing machine to make masks because we're in the middle of this pandemic and everybody who can sew is making masks. I've made some too. They're not that difficult to make. And if you can make a mask, you can make this because this basically just involves sewing straight lines. Although, as you'll see, I prefer not to make my lines straight. You'll see. I'll get to that. The second thing to consider is that this is just another way to showcase some of your sea glass. And it's a really sweet way to showcase it because it's kind of a small beach scene. It gives you that feeling of being at the beach. You make a little sea glass sailboat. You put some sea glass and shells and pebbles down on the beach. And it's just sweet. It's the nicest little thing. So the third thing to consider is that they make the sweetest gifts because you can write on the back, you just take a Sharpie marker, you can write happy birthday, hope you're doing okay, hope you're surviving this pandemic okay, thinking of you, whatever you wanna write, you can write a poem, anything. And then you can give it to somebody and because it's a standard size, you can, they can pop it into a frame, like this is just a four by six frame and it's just the sweetest little gift. So don't go away, join me for this project. So before you start this project, I do need to give you a warning. They can be very addictive. A little over a year ago, I decided I wanted to try to make a little postcard, quilted postcard things are in, and I thought I want to try to make one. Well, since then, I have made so many. I've made a ton of different designs, lots of different colors. I've put sea glass on them, which is something a little bit different. Other people haven't done that, so I started doing that, and then I really got addicted to them. I've posted a few here up on my board just to show you. These these are some of my beach scenes. They're not all beach scenes, but beach scenes tend to be my favorite. So that's why I'm showing you a beach scene today. And I've made a lot of them in four by six. I've made uh, quite a few in five by seven. Some of these up here are five by seven. And I've also made quite a few eight by tens. So if you want to see them, I've got some posted on my website some that are for sale. I've already sold quite a few and I've given a lot away, but there are some there. My website is JackieTrimperSeaGlass.com and um, I'll have some of these for sale too when I finish them. And if you're interested in any of them, you can go there. The other thing that I have on my website that you might be interested in because of today's project, I'm going to post the pattern and instructions for doing today's project. You'll find that there. And I'm also going to put in a kit that contains all of the materials that you need to do it. If you're interested, if you don't have a lot of materials and you think I'd like to give this project a try, but I don't think I have all the stuff I need, you can get a kit. Just be forewarned that if you do one, you're going to be probably wanting to try a whole bunch more because they're so much fun. So the other thing you might find on my website, my book is there and my book is on sale 20% off for the Sea Glass Festival. So check it out, JackieTrimperSeaGlass.com. So the format for this video, I've broken it down into 10 short steps. So what I'm going to do is I will demonstrate a step to you. Then you can pause the video, go off, do that step, come back for the next step. And after 10 short steps, you should have your four by six 
postcard all finished. And then at the end of the video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a slideshow of a bunch of different seascape designs that I've made. I've made a lot of different designs, but I'm going to show you the seascape ones that I've done so just to give you a few ideas of how you can vary it and hopefully it'll be some really good inspiration for you. So let's get started with step one. So the first step involved is gathering up all of your materials. So let me show you what you need. So what I'm going to need to make this 4 inch by 6 inch quilted postcard, I've drawn a bit of a pattern here. I always like to have a bit of a sketch to guide myself, give me some ideas as I'm going. And I've cut some strips of fabric. And the fabric that I've cut is 7 inches long by 1 to 1 and a half inches wide. So I have a gray blue piece for the sky. I have a few blue pieces for the water. I have some different pieces of brown. I've got four different browns here for the sand and I have a piece of really dark brown for the foreground. And I also need a backing. So I've cut a backing that's four and a half inches by six and a half inches. And I have a piece of batting which is four and a half inches by six and a half inches. I have a piece of fusible web that is four inches by six inches and I have a piece of fusible Pellon stabilizer which is four inches by six inches. If you want some more information on these products I've put a link in the comment section down below that you can look at if you'd like. Now I also need some yarn so I have this ball of brown yarn here and I've cut a piece, not a very big piece of yarn, you can see I don't need that much yarn, just a little bit. And I also want some tan colored embroidery thread, so I have that. I need some beads, so I have a little container of beads here, but I only need a few. So I've just taken a few beads out here for this. And I want a little bit of sea glass. I have a green piece of sea glass for the sail. I've picked out a brown piece for the hull of the boat. And I've picked out some white and a couple of shells for the foreground in the beach. And if you're interested, this little kit has all of this stuff in it. And on top of that, which isn't included in the kit, you need thread. Now you can use one color thread for this if you want. I like to vary my thread. So I have some brown thread for the brown part for quilting it. I have some tan colored thread for the sandy part and I have some blue thread for the water and the sky. Because I like to do that, but you don't need to do that if you don't want to. You need a little bit of glue to glue on your sea glass and shells. I like to use Quick Seal Kitchen and Bath Adhesive Caulk, but if you don't have any of that you can use any glue that dries clear. So a fabric glue or whatever you want to use there. This I feel really good about because I know it's not going to fall off. And you need a sharpie marker for you to write on the back, sign it, etc. And other than that you'll need your sewing machine, your cutting tools, an iron, an ironing board, all of your basic sewing tools. So uh, you can pause the video and go off and gather up all your materials before going on to step two. So step two is to prepare the backing. So this is your Pellon fusible stabilizer and you want to iron your backing fabric onto your stabilizer. So be careful here that you put the fabric on the side that's kind of rough and sticky. That's the side that's going to be activated by your iron. So take that over to your ironing board. If you put that on the wrong side what's going to happen is it's going to stick to your ironing board and not to your fabric. You want it to stick to your fabric so be careful about that. So just take your iron and press that and then the heat activates the stickiness in the Pellon fusible stabilizer so that the backing fabric sticks to the stabilizer. Perfect. Now I've got a board on my table here. So now you're going to take that and take your cutting tools and just trim the excess fabric from around the edges. 
and then your backing is going to be all ready. You can just set that aside until you have your little postcard made and then I'll show you how to sew this onto your postcard. So there, that's ready to go. So step three, you want to prepare your background. So go back to your ironing board with your piece of batting and your piece of fusible web. Now you want to iron the fusible web, which is four inches by six inches, onto your batting, which is four and a half by six and a half. So be careful here that you put the sticky side down or again, you're going to be in trouble. I've done this before where I've ironed it on the wrong way and then the sticky stuff sticks to my iron instead of to my batting. So I want to press that onto the backing. Now, wait a few minutes before you try to tear the paper off because if you don't wait, it's not going to tear off properly. So there, I've let that cool off and now I just take the paper and I peel it right off. And now my batting is ready to use. Now, I want to take that back to my cutting board. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take all my strips of fabric and I'm going to arrange them on here in the way that I want them. So to do this, you don't want, to, what's going to happen is that I'm going to put all my strips onto my, bat, my batting and then when I press it, the heat from this sticky stuff here, the heat is going to activate and it'll make the pieces of fabric stick to the batting and that's my goal. So I don't like to have my strips really straight, so I like to cut them. So first I'm going to cut this sky fabric and the sky can be kind of straight because it's up at the top. You want to arrange this so that you're going from top to bottom because it's going to stick better and you want to make sure that there's a little bit of each piece of fabric that is touching the batting so that when you put the iron to it it's going to stick. Now this is the only one that I want straight. I want the horizon line straight. So I'm going to take my blue and I'm going to use my cutting tool to make sure that my horizon line is straight. And then I'm just going to put a really thin bit of blue right there on the horizon line. And then I'll just continue on with the rest of my strips. And I'm going to make them a little bit wavy. So you see if I go like that, it's going to give me a little bit of a wave in the water. And with the sandy pieces, I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to do the tiniest little bit of a wave in my cut. And then I will arrange the pieces in a way, going from top to bottom, that they're just a little bit more interesting than if they were flat. If you would rather have your pieces of fabric flat, that's perfectly fine. This is your creation, not mine, so you make it the way you want it. I just like a little bit of a wave in my pieces. And I like to have the nice dark one right at the foreground so that, so there, I've got my little background all done. Now I'm going to go back to the ironing board. I got the magic of having an ironing pad here that I can just shift back and forth with my cutting board. And I'm going to take my iron, press that gently, and the pressing of that and the heat of the iron activates the stickiness in the fusible web so that there's a little bit of each strip that sticks to the backing and this is going to help it all stay in place while you sew it. And there, now we're ready to do the sewing and the quilting. And you'll notice if I go like this, it's not going to fall off because the stickiness is holding because there's a little bit of each strip that is on that sticky bit but then there's some loose pieces all along as well, which I kind of like because it gives it a bit of texture. 
So step four is to quilt the background. Now this is a technique that I call raw edge strip piecing. So I've got my strips of fabric and they have the raw edge up at the top here. And I really want to preserve that raw edge. So I don't want to quilt right at the top of each strip. So I'm going to use a free motion technique to quilt this. And um, if you want, you can just you do straight stitches. You don't have to go free motion. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't really like my lines straight. So that's why I like to do free motion quilting. So I'll show you how I do this. So I just basically am quilting back and forth. And I'm not really doing it in a particular line or anything like that. If you want your lines to go straight across, you don't have to use your walking foot. I have my walking foot on so that I get these wavy lines. The other thing you can do if you don't like sewing backwards, I do a lot of free motion quilting because I quite like it and I like sewing backwards, but what you can do is at the end of each line, you can just turn your whole work around. So then you're not having to sew backwards. You can sew straight across. So I changed my thread from the dark brown to the tan color. Now you'll notice when I put the pieces on the background, I started from the top and then worked my way to the bottom. Whereas when I'm quilting, I'm quilting from the bottom to the top. And that just helps the pieces all stay in place much better. So you can see I'm going back and forth with my quilting lines, just free motion. And I go right over to I go right to the end, but I'll be cutting off those messy bits on the end. So I'm not too concerned about it because I want it, don't want it to lie perfectly flat because I really like having all sorts of texture here. So I've changed to the light blue thread for the water. And I'm just going to make my lines go back and forth here again. Just to add some waves and texture in the water. Now this last line that I have coming across here is at the very top of the horizon. And I want to try to keep that line straight because it is the horizon line. And because I want my sky to be nice and flat, I'm not going to quilt the sky. I'm just going to leave the sky unquilted. So I've got the quilting done and I'm just going to give that a quick press with the iron just to press all those stitches into place. And I might remove some of these loose threads here because I want my horizon line to be nice and crisp. And you'll find if there's any other loose threads that you don't particularly like, just pull them off. And then I'm going to move that to the cutting board and I will take my cutting tools and I'm going to cut this. When you go to cut this, make sure that you line it up so that the horizon line is straight. If you cut the horizon line crooked, it's going to show. And I'm just going to trim that to four inches by six inches. This is why you make it a little bit bigger, just so there's a little bit of room for error. There, my background is all done. So I have my background and I have my backing, but before I put them together, I want to add a bunch of details here using embroidery. So if you look here, you'll see I have three pieces of grass coming up and this is the yarn. So what I want to do is I want to take my piece of yarn that I have here. I've got some embroidery floss that I threaded and I want to couch this yarn on. So step five is couching on yarn to create these grasses. So you just, to show you how I do this, I'm going to do the middle piece of grass first. It's the longest piece. So I just put some yarn over the edge here 
and I just sew it on with the embroidery floss. So at the bottom I do two or three stitches just to secure it in place. When I go around to put the border on this will secure it in place even more but I want to get it started here and then I'm just going to take a stitch every about every quarter of an inch. I'm going to go up and do a stitch and then do another stitch and I like to put these grasses a little bit wavy so I try not to get my yarn sewn on too straight. I'm not much of one for straight lines. I like my lines kind of wavy and with the grass I find putting this on by hand, it, you can put it on by machine if you want, but if you put it on by hand, it just makes it a little bit more, gives it a little bit more texture, which I quite like. And then when you get to the top of your piece of grass, you notice I haven't cut my yarn. I'm going to wait until I decide how far up I want it to go before I cut it. I'm just going to do again about three stitches at the top to secure it in place and then I'll tie it off at the back. You won't see the knot at the back because this back is going to be covered with the backing. Sorry I'm being a little awkward here. I hope you can see that okay. But this is a technique that's called couching. There you go. Then just tie a knot in the back. And there I've got one piece of grass couched on. Snip it off there, snip it off there, and snip it off there. Now I'm going to do the other two blades of grass. So there I have three pieces of yarn couched on and they look like three blades of grass. So you can pause the video to couch your yarn on. So now step six is that I want to add a few more little details. So I'm using the same embroidery floss and I want to add in these blades of grass here and some blades of grass along the sand dunes here and three little seagulls in the sky. So I'll start with the blades of grass. So what I do is I just take my embroidery floss. This is um, really simple and quite effective. So I go one, two, like just up and down with the embroidery floss. three, tie it off at the back and it's three little blades of grass. So I added a few more blades there and a few more blades there. So now I want to do some grass along the sand dune here just to emphasize the sand dune. So this is really simple. It's just a bunch of little stitches and if you put them in a row they look like grass along the top of your sand dune because these curvy lines of fabric look kind of like the waves in a sand dune. On so a I have some little stitches of embroidery floss along here and along here to get those grass details and the last thing I want to do is add some seagulls to the sky so it's just again two stitches make a seagull and just it's such a subtle little detail and so easy to add but it's so effective especially where I haven't quilted the sky so the sky is kind of flat so just having a few stitches in the sky there that look like seagulls just adds so much and you know seagulls aren't tan, right? You know they're white or off-white, but using the tan embroidery floss goes well with this color scheme. 
and it just creates enough of a shadow in the sky so you know there's a few seagulls flying up there. And it takes no time at all to do all these little details. And then you tie it off at the back. And there. So pause the video and do your embroidery bits just to add a few little details. Now we're on to step seven, which is to add some beads. So I only have a few little beads here. Now the thing about beads that I really like is that you don't need to put very many on. I'm just using a needle and thread here and I'm using brown thread, the same brown thread that I used to do the quilting here because my beads are brown. There's brown thread on brown grass or brown sand rather so you know that it's not really standing out. But whenever the light catches the bead, it just gives you that little bit of glimmer. And you know what it's like when you're at the beach. Glitter is the name of the game when you're at the beach because the sun reflects off anything that's wet and gives you that little bit of glimmer. So I love having a little bit of glitter in any beach scene that I do. And beads are what really do the job there. So I'll just put a few tiny little beads on the sand. Tie it off at the back. See how quickly you can do this. It doesn't take long at all. So grab your beads and a needle and thread and sew a few on the sand. Not very many. You don't want it totally covered because when you're down at the beach it's not like that. Not everything is glittering. It's just when something's wet. The other thing that I like to do is to put these tiny little beads into the grass. And you can't, if, like you can hardly even see the bead. It just kind of is hidden in the grass there. Like you might not even be able to see that. But when the light catches it, oh man, does it ever work. It just gives you a little bit, sort of brings the, the piece to life whenever you get that little bit of light shining off a bead. So there you go. I've sewed a few beads on there and along the strips of grass and now I'm ready to sew this onto the backing. So I've got my backing that I had prepared earlier and those are ready to go together. And I want to sew this together before I put the sea glass and shells on. So you can pause the video and go and get your beading done. So step eight, we want to sew on the binding or sew an edge all the way around to make sure that your backing and your top will stay together. So if they don't match up exactly in terms of size, just trim to make sure that they're the same. Mine are the same, so I'm good to go. And I'm using my walking foot. If you don't have a walking foot, that's fine. Just use a straight foot. And I'm using brown colored thread, my dark brown, and make sure that you've got the same color thread in your bobbin. And your settings on your machine, you want to set it to zigzag and set your maximum stitch width and your minimum stitch length. There we go. I'm all set there. And then we just are going to sew all the way around the edge with the zigzag stitch. And this is going to bind these two parts together. And there you go, you have your binding sewn on. And the two pieces are sewn together. So step nine, I want to add my sea glass and my shells to complete my little scene. So I have my quick seal kitchen and bath adhesive caulk, or if you want, you can use any glue that's going to dry clear. As you can see, this goes on white, but it dries clear and you really want something that dries clear because it will show through the sea glass. 
and I'm going to put my sail there and my boat so it's floating along out in the water and I'm going to put I've got a couple of shells here and a piece of white sea glass that I'd like to have down here around my grass on the beach. Now I have to let that set for a little bit. I find that kitchen and bath adhesive caulk. You know it's set once it's dried clear. And then my little seascape postcard is going to be finished. So step 10, the last thing you need to do is to sign the back. I'll be careful here because that's not dry yet. But I take my Sharpie marker, sign my name to the back. I can decide if I'm going to give this to someone. I'll write them a nice note and then off you go. It's ready to go. So I just wanted to point out a few things to you that you can do different. I'm going to show you another one that I did and I'm going to point out a few differences because this piece uses all the same fabrics but I've made things a little bit different by putting the seagrass on this side instead of this side. You'll see it looks a little bit different. The sailboat's smaller. The seagulls are over here instead of over here. And the wave of the grass and the sand and whatnot is all just a little bit different. The other thing that makes it quite different is that instead of using the dark brown for the border, I use the light tan colored, sandy colored fab or thread for the border and it really changes the look of it. So there's a whole lot that you can do to just make it look a little bit different and make it your own. So thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project and if you have any questions or comments post them in the comments section down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you get a chance to tune in to the Beachcombing Festival online and it's really cool, really worthwhile. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you a slideshow of a whole bunch of my seascaped scenes. Some of them have sailboats in them, some of them don't, some of them are just variations on a theme. Just to give you some inspiration and give you some ideas of how you can vary this project to make it look a bit different. Make it your own. So, until next time, happy sea glass hunting!